Hey, what's up everybody? I uh, got a new video for you here. Been holding off on it for a little bit uh, because I was waiting to get both of these in. As you can see here, we have the Browse Blades Reloader and I have both uh, finishes here for it. You have the satin finish one and then this is the blacked out one. This is just some of the swag that comes with it. Uh, but get this out of the way for the space purposes. Move these out into the center. So, I got this one in about, I want to say, two or three weeks ago. Uh, been playing with it, using it, breaking it in. It uh, doesn't really need much breaking, but, you know, this one's been flipped a couple hundred times at least. This one I just got today, maybe a few hours ago, and I've only flipped it a couple times and just wanted to get a video out on it just because I don't think there's been a blackout video on this yet. So hopefully I'm one of the first and everyone can get a look out of it. Uh, really cool. Um, as you can see, you know, Really, when you have them next to each other, this satin really shines, uh, stands out. And then this blacked out one, really cool how he did the, you know, the reverse on the Mikel Williamson insignia here. And for anyone that doesn't know already, this was a collaboration between Jason Browse and Mikel Williamson. Uh, Mikel kind of designed the handle, and uh, Jason kind of took it from there with the, you know, the organic look and feel to it. And you know, Jason obviously had the, the grind and everything on the blade. So, another difference you can see is on the. Uh, blade itself. You have the Browse blades here black with the silver and here silver with the black. I'll do a close-up on these later. I just want to show you some of the, the little variable differences between them. Obviously all the hardware is blacked out on here. All here you have the stainless steel opposite side. You guys can see. So pretty cool stuff. We'll move this one a little off and do a quick overview of the, of the knife by itself. So, you know, this thing just flies open and makes such that, that really nice sound. And everyone's done a, a pretty in-depth video on these already, so I won't get too crazy with it. But you can see mine is number 77 of 500. I think I got this uh, in the second shipment he sent out. I think he was sending them out about, you know, about 30 or 40 at a time. So mine came with the second one. But you can see that really nice satin finish on here, one of the nicest satin finishes I've seen. And just catches the light. You know, really nice. Everyone seems to be loving this uh, cutout piece here. Um, you can see the pivot. And then just this nice G10. Some people talk about different kind of finishes on here, maybe like a blasting or something, but I just think it looks really good. I mean, it almost has slightly a carbon fiber look to it with the graininess on it. You can see the cool, just easy, you know, screws here. The Mikkel Williamson pocket clip. There you go. A little bit of, little bit of dirt on here from, from playing with it. But that's that G10 backspacer. And then the cutout there. You can see the lockup. And the front side. And I don't know how many people are showing this, but on the pocket clip, it's reversible. I'll try to get that to focus. Yep, there we go. So you have the deep carry on this side for the righties, which I am, and then if you want to, you can switch it over to the deep carry for the lefties on that side. But I mean, really really smooth I don't know if it's as smooth as Gavco's if you guys saw Gavco's video he was just like you know flicking it open and then pretty much at this point it would just fall closed uh, you know I can get it that way got a little, little bit more shaking uh, but I actually prefer that I don't want this thing just flipping closed on me you know the second I I unlock the lock bar on here and just you know, I would just like boop, drop you know but I think you know the detents perfect on here that to focus sucks it right in and you know this thing super smooth flying out and that sound it makes you know just perfect with this D2 steel and then the titanium uh, you know uh, liners here I'll try to get really close and see if you can hear a good schnick on it yep and then 
you know, there's the brass blades. Little focus. There we go. Yeah, and the jimping right here. So, but you know, you can do it, you know, either hand flies out really easy. Uh, one thing, you know, with the detent, they actually leave it open as far as like where you can see the detent uh, closing and opening, which you actually see a little bit more pronounced on the blackout. There's some kind of glare going on in here. With that line there, that's the, the detent hole. Uh, that's actually something that McCall Williamson does on a number of his knives, from what I understand, where he actually, you know, leaves that exposed. It's actually a better way, um, I don't know if it's a better way, but it's just, you know, he can get more action on it that way, uh, having the flipper all the way up top and, and having that exposed. Uh, so that's just something that was, I guess, a more of a McKell thing with that. So anyways, you've seen most of that, you know, so let's get to the, the blackout edition. I'm sure most of you guys want to see that. Uh, this thing just looks stealthy, sleek, you know, I mean, covert ops going on with this thing here. Uh, the one thing with the Cerakoting that Jason does, and from my understanding, is that he has his Cerakoting done by the people who created Cerakoting. Uh, he sends them all out that way. But, oh yeah. And even with the Cerakote here, it's a little bit different sound it makes actually coming out, you know. Uh, maybe a little bit subtler than the other one, but still flies out. And this one, like I said, I flipped it about 10 times or so before I opened this video, if that. But right off the bat, you can see, you know, that detent line exposed does show up a lot more pronounced on the blackout, obviously because the back background. And this thing came pretty oiled up. I haven't really done much to it since I got it, so you can see that oil in there. Um, but, you know, you feel this, and it feels nice and smooth. You can see the grind on there. And then just that perfect grind across here. Wait for this to focus. There you go. Just comes to that nice point at the tip. You know, it definitely feels sharp out of the box. Uh, and then here you go, here's the brass blades and the silver over the black. This circo is pretty clean. I mean, it definitely, I think, would be tough to do on this blade shape um, with the jimping here, the, you know, the multiple grinds on this. Uh, so you can see, I mean, I haven't really used this at all, um, but there are places where the Cerakote does get a little bit lighter um, on this jimping here. I don't know if you can tell, but maybe on the edges there, it's a little bit light. And then even on this corner, you can see that little, little spot that I don't think it got totally covered in doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to really utilize this knife. Uh, probably use the satin one more and this one will just be, you know, a bit more of a safe queen if you call it that way. Uh, but same thing on the, you know, the, the G10 here, the G10 backspacer, but all the hardware blacked out, the pivot, um, you know, the pocket clip blacked out, Screws blacked out there. Even like, you know, usually sometimes you'll see a little bit more marks on these after they're blacked out, but they're pretty clean. You know, but boom. Flies right out. Flies right out that way. Flies right out that way. A little bit of oil on my finger. Uh, lefty. No problem with that. And just so you can see them open next to each other. I just like showing the pocket clip. I think the pocket clip's cool with the having the Mikel Williamson on there, and then the uh, you know the brass blades on the blade itself. So they look look really good next to each other. It almost looks like the black one's bigger. I guess it's just the you know the camera putting one below the other one. Yeah, I mean now it's the opposite. But pretty slick. We'll show you the lockups on these. Um, the satin one is a little bit uh, earlier on the lock cup than this black one. This black one is a little bit tighter as far as the, the lock bar goes. But we'll try to bring them in here and get you guys a good look at them. Focus. All right. Yeah, so you can see the satin ones are right about 40, 45. Maybe some people call it 50 just because the whole lock bar is actually on it. 
Um, but this black one, you're looking at like 55, 60%, maybe 65 as far as how far it comes over. And that was just with a regular flip open. Um, and everyone's talked about how like the, the left side, the locking side is a little bit thicker than the right side, the non-locking side as far as liner goes. Yeah, don't really care about that. I mean, it makes sense mechanically for what they're doing with it. So I'm not staring at that the whole way down, but everything there just so you can see the lockups on that it's interesting because it's actually the opposite on my um, my triple threat folders I have from Jason the blackout edition on my triple threat which actually I believe is a custom one the JB 196 uh, the lockup is super early and then the lockup on my uh, uh, stonewashed or you know uh, regular standard triple threat folder is um, you know a little bit more pronounced and we'll see if we uh, fly these things out pretty hard if it's gonna go over a little bit more you know not really you know it's pretty much right where it was before on this one and fly that out and you know pretty much about the same so you can get a little bit better view oh yeah the other thing that I didn't even think about with these flippers is that you can see here you know, the Cerakote is only on this edge because when this flips under, the lock bar is hidden against here. So, when you fly this open and you look underneath, obviously that lock bar would be scraping across the Cerakote. Come on. Focus. There you go. And scraping it off so I guess you know what Jason thought was just to leave it done and have this little swedge done uh, so it's not going to get all messed up over time which you know makes total sense uh, but you know when you look at the top it almost looks like it's kind of rubbed off which it wouldn't do anyways you know if you had it that way man it's hard to get this thing to to like that see that a little better so you know I, mean, I don't know maybe when I see some other people's videos maybe their their tangs their flipper edges will be done a little bit differently than that um, but you can see you know that's just how it is because the lock bar will be scraping against that either way and I haven't seen many you know blacked out flippers with the the flipper blacked out on there so I have to compare it to what else is being being done but really liking this uh, a few stats on these just so you guys know, I'll put them in the description too. Uh, you're looking at, it's all D2 steel, obviously that's what Jason uses. Uh, the overall length is uh, 8.32 inches. Uh, the overall length closed is 4.6 inches. The blades are three and a half inches long. And the blade thickness, I don't think I showed that to you guys, uh, is, one, is .187, which is pretty nice and thick. Uh, you know, it says it's the same thickness for both blades. It does look like the satin one is a little bit thicker, but maybe once again it's just because of how I'm holding them. Try to bring these up here. You know. But nice, nice blades. You know, reverse grip. <laughs> it's like, you know, just scissors, scissors someone's head off with this thing. Sorry, I'm bumping the camera here and trying to get everything in the in the light. And then, you know, here you got the jimping, really nice and firm. Man, these things are fun. So you can see this one was uh, 77. Come on, a 500, and then this one was 254 or 500. So he's getting through them. You know, just, just fly it. You know, and the lock bar, it's, it's working in too. You know, when I first did this, this was a touch sticky, if that. But the more and more I'm doing it, it's just, you know, working fine now. Reverse, you know, throwing it up. Against gravity, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, once again, just to show a little bit of the Cerakoting too. Here's my triple threat 
uh, folding knife. Oh, messed everything up there. There we go. So, just so you can see, you know, it is a pretty nice job he does on these Cerakoting, you know, that the company sends it out to that does it, you know, nice and perfect. This one, you can't find anything on it. I mean, this one, like I said, there's like that little touch and maybe a little fading here on the corners, but you can see the difference in the thickness too on these blades. But yeah, once again, talking about the lockup, you know, this one, as you can see there, I mean, this is like nothing, you know. So, I don't know if Sarah Cohen's making a little a touch bit stickier or not, but, you know, this one, you can open fine like this, or, you know, you give it a little push, it's good to go. So, that's that. And then, why not just show this one too? This is my, uh, you know, the standard one. And this one, I don't even need to, to thumb it. You know, I mean, I broke this one in so much, you can see. Boom, no problem, you know, flies open, no issues. So, and then just as a, a size comparison. You know, even though the blades are supposed to be the same length, three and a half inch, three and a half inches, you can see how the reloader does look slightly larger, beefier, you know. And both G10, I mean, look at the difference that you can get out of G10, it's crazy. So, that's awesome. Those two next to each other. And then, those two next to each other. So, pretty sweet. I'm loving them. I highly recommend you guys get the reloaders. Uh, great flippers, great flipping action on them. Uh, you know, I like having both. <laughs> you know, it's hard to tell you which one to uh, get this fixed up here. To pick between the two. The, uh, the satin sweet, you know, stands out shiny, bright. But the black is just... You know, pretty cool, and obviously Jason loves black, so he probably prefers the black at one. But either one of these, I highly recommend. So, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, leave me some comments. Tell me what you think. And uh, once I get the next round of browse blades in, I'll do a video on those too. But uh, thank you, Jason, for getting these out to me, and you know, so I could do uh, a quick video on these and have fun with them uh, now that the summer's here. So, thanks. Bye.